<laughs> oh, geez. Do you feel like there's a lot of noise out there with Etsy advice? Are you not sure what to follow, what to listen to? Who's legit? Who knows what they're talking about? Who's maybe making stuff up? In today's video, I'm actually going to give my reaction to some TikTok videos of other Etsy gurus and people giving advice about Etsy. And I'm gonna share my thoughts and feedback on these things. So this is gonna be no shade or anything. I just want to give some extra thoughts and reactions to some advice that is floating around out there. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Dylan Jarris and I'm an Etsy shop owner of about seven years. I've sold over $1.5 million in revenue on the platform. It's over a million dollars in profit. And I also sell on Amazon and Shopify. My entire background is corporate e-commerce. And now I'm teaching over 700 Etsy sellers at this moment, how to build their shops to that multi six figure level. So if you like my videos, if you like learning about real e-commerce strategy, definitely subscribe to this channel and it'll encourage me to keep making more videos for you guys. Let's listen to the first one. How I made my first $1,000 on Etsy. One thing I did is I stopped listening to the six figure Etsy coaches. Like I love the fact that they've seen success. Like I'm really happy for them, but they are not someone that I could relate to in the moment that I started my Etsy shop. I needed to and wanted to learn from someone that I could relate to that was just where I was a few months ago. Like yes, six figures sounds amazing, but what did you do in the beginning five years ago when you started your Etsy shop to even get to that point? What were the basics? What were the foundations? Because a lot of the times what those six figure Etsy coaches are teaching you is something that works for them right now in this phase of where they are in their business. And oftentimes that is not what they did in the beginning to get them there. So if you're someone that hasn't even made your first $200 yet, hi, I'm Miranda. <laughs> I can help you get there. I hope you learn the basics and the foundation of Etsy so that you can be successful on the platform. And if you don't know where to get started, I highly recommend checking out my masterclass, which you can find in my stand store on my profile. Okay, so this is interesting. Absolutely, this is definitely true. The strategies you need for your first $100, your first $1,000 in sales are completely different than the strategies that you need to go from $100,000 a year to $400,000 a year. They're completely different strategies. But I do actually think it's beneficial to learn Learn from someone who has gone through each of those phases because that person who's kind of in that end phase, right? Who is very successful and who has, yes, gotten their first 10 grand, but also they've maybe gotten their first million, right? They know where you're going. They can see miles ahead from what you're seeing right now. And there's things that they can teach you about getting your first thousand dollars or about getting your first $10,000 that someone who has just recently hit their first 10 grand might not know. So basically the further someone has gotten in their career, the more that they can help you anticipate. So definitely, I definitely recommend not studying what the big shops are doing right now. I absolutely agree with her on that and that you really want to look at what did those big shops do in their first year, in their first $10,000, something like that. What I give you in my program is different strategies you need for different phases of your business. So I separate it into two phases, the sprinting phase and the marathon phase. And the sprinting phase is really, you know, full of the strategies you need to get your first 5,000 orders, right? Your first hundred orders. It's not what you need to scale from a hundred thousand to 400,000 that comes later on in my program. But we focus on right away the strategies you need to get traction from day one of launching your shop. This is a gritty Etsy question from Bella. What is the magic number for the number of items for a print on demand t-shirt store on Etsy? Now, there's no such thing as magic. So when I talk about magic numbers, I don't mean you get to that number in your Etsy store and all of a sudden you're gonna make sales. What I mean by magic numbers is the number of items to have in your store, depending on the niche, to start to get viability in your Etsy business. And by viability, I mean some sales. So generally speaking, that magic number is 100 items. You should make sales by the time you get to 100 items in your store. If you've done the listing of those items correctly, and you still don't have sales, there's a problem with your store. But for t-shirts, the number is higher. Generally speaking, a minimum of 200. I would go beyond that. Regularly, I see stores 300, 400, 500 uh, uh, items to make regular daily sales. Those are the numbers you need to be thinking of. Wait, this is really interesting. So I talk to tons of Etsy sellers, right? I have seen what happens when someone launches their shop, has maybe, you know, 600 listings in it. It's been six months, they have like two sales. So I do not think that there's a magic number because those 600 listings, they could be totally trash listings, like terrible listings, right? Terrible designs, or maybe they're good designs or decent, but maybe they're all of the same thing using the same long tail keywords. So they're really limited 
limited to maybe only being found for a set of maybe 10 to 12 different search terms. And this is what happens when someone picks a niche and is very focused on picking a niche. So I see this happen all the time. People will come to me with, you know, four to 600 listings and they have like three sales. And maybe the SEO isn't even terrible. Maybe the designs aren't even terrible, but they simply don't have the opportunity to be found by enough different search terms. I don't think there is a number of listings because you can do more volume with eight good listings that have completely different sets of long tail keywords that are really good quality, high quality, unique, special, higher value proposition type of designs. You can do more volume with that than you could do with 600 terrible listings. <laughs> I've seen people do over six figures with less than 10 listings. And I've also seen people with thousands of listings struggle to get even 20 orders per month. It's not exactly a game of how many listings you have. It really depends on how many different search terms you're coming up under, as well as the quality of your designs and listings. And really the way we look at it is value proposition. So the content, the, the quality of the item, as well as the customer experience where they are trusting a specific outcome. So today I'm gonna let you guys in on my little secret hack that I use to bump an Etsy listing that hasn't sold in a while. You're going to go into your shop manager and click on your listings. I usually go directly to the second page, but if you don't have a lot of listings, you can just scroll down to the bottom. You're going to find a listing and click on the settings button with the arrow and renew the listing. This only costs 20 cents, but will bump your listing. To see what I'm talking about, you can type in the search bar, a keyword for your listing, Start by most recent and you will see that your listing has been renewed. I don't know if it's luck or strategic, but it has worked for me. So I figured I'd share because it is a lot cheaper than running ads. So cheaper than ads, yes. More effective than ads. That's tough. Renewing a listing that's not selling. It's kind of like that saying where insanity is doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. If you keep renewing a bad listing or a listing that's not getting views, a listing that's not getting favorites, a listing that's not converting anyone, if you just keep renewing that, you're probably not gonna see different results. You're probably just wasting your money. I would actually go into the listing stats and look at the listing on a micro level to analyze why is it not selling? What is wrong with it? And make changes. I I would never just be renewing listings without changing something about it. To me, that would be a total waste of money. So I highly recommend identifying what's wrong, why it's not getting found or why it's not selling, and then making some key changes, not changing everything at once, because you want to be able to isolate what the problem was. We're not just gonna totally revamp the listing and only then would I renew it. Typically, it's a combination of your photos, your SEO, and also friction in the purchasing process if your problem is that you're getting a lot of views and visits, but they're not converting to sales. So I have a whole system for how we identify if it's a hard decision for people to actually purchase it. We want to make your listings an easy decision for people. So they come to the listing, they buy it the first time they see it. So if you're having a problem with traffic and visits and views, it's probably something to do with the SEO and maybe the listing photo and maybe the price. If you're having a problem with conversion, then there's usually something in the listing that's causing friction. And I love identifying this for my students, making them videos, showing them exactly what the problem is, why the friction is there and how we can get rid of it. We had a student, oh my gosh, I gotta show you this. We literally had a student who posted in our community group, just wanted to say thank you. You are right about this listing. I, I didn't have it to take new photos, but I removed this specific photo that was causing friction and bam, I got two sales from it right away. So typically if something's not selling, if it's not getting found, not converting customers, I wouldn't just keep renewing the listing blindly. I would actually go in, fix the problem and then renew it. Here's how to 10x your sales on your Etsy store by using this very simple marketing hack. This is the exact strategy that I've used to make over 169 gross on Etsy. Let me show you how. But first, did you know that when you post a listing on Etsy, Etsy's algorithm analyzes your listing within 24 hours to seven days, and it's gonna look at how much traffic it's getting, how many favoriting you're getting, and how many sales you're getting. So your goal essentially is to get as much traffic as possible within the 24 hour, seven day short time period. So here's what I want you to do. Every time you create a Etsy listing, I want you to go ahead and create a Pinterest pin. You're gonna go on Canva, Choose any Pinterest pin format that you want. In this case, we're gonna choose this one. I'm gonna add the necklace that I wanna promote or the listing I wanna promote, I'm gonna share. And when I'm uploading this pin to Pinterest, I'm using Gift for Wipe because as you can see, it has 33,000 people who are searching for that keyword per month. So these are some examples of pins. If you use this tactic, make sure that you're using all the appropriate keywords. Follow for more tips like this. 
Okay, she's recommending using Pinterest to get traction in the first 24 hours to seven days of a listing. So I would not use Pinterest for that. I would use Facebook. Pinterest is the long game, right? My students are typically seeing results within like three to six months, but Pinterest is the long game. It's not something where you see results 24 hours in seven days. Typically that's not the case. So I would be using Facebook. Facebook hands down is where we are seeing the fastest results with getting traffic and interest to new listings. Also with the Pinterest strategy, that is a very long way to do it, okay? Pinterest is a volume game. So I would not be creating pins in that way. There's a much faster way to do Pinterest, not spending so much time doing the busy work part of it. You can actually do it in a much faster way. No busy work required, just boom, 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 pin, pin, pin. It's fast, it's you know quick, it's painless. Facebook though, Facebook works very quickly. This is your Etsy game plan for 2023. Step one, create an Etsy shop. Step two, find a niche like health or wellness. Step three, find a product such as planners. Step four, create a Canva account and start making your products. Step five, price competitively and run daily sales. Step six, stay consistent. Makes it seem very simple, right? I could see where people think, oh, six steps, easy, right? Consistency, I mean, I love that she put that in there. So key. That's honestly one of the number one things people are missing. Something else about this is creating a shop, finding a niche, then finding a product. So instead of a niche, I really recommend focusing on finding customers because picking a niche or a niche, right? It doesn't guarantee that there are profitable customers customers behind that niche or niche who are ready to purchase and who have consistent spending habits. So some things that I like to use as an example for this is dog food, right? There's some people who buy dog food that's really expensive, like fresh delivered to your doorstep every week, you know, made by a dog food chef or something. Okay, so there's those people. And then there's people who buy the cheapest type of dog food at Walmart, not brand loyal. They will just buy whatever's on sale to keep the dog alive. Those are two different, totally different types of customers. One is gonna have much more consistent spending habits. They maybe have higher discretionary income. They might um, be more of a profitable customer to target, especially in a time when the economy is up and down. Another example that I will use is maybe skincare or cosmetics. Not all skincare or cosmetic brands are targeting the same people. Just because you say, I'm going to sell in the skincare or cosmetic category, it doesn't mean that your customers have high discretionary income and that they're gonna have consistent spending habits so that your income is consistent. Having a niche is not enough. You really want to know who you're targeting. And right now, especially, you want to target the people who have higher discretionary income, who have secure, stable jobs, you know, people who value time more than money. And you can have different niches in the same shop as long as you're targeting the same customer. I have tons of students doing this. I have one student who did this. She started with print on demand, actually. And then she added in both some physical handmade or altered products and then also some digital products. So she's selling all three in the same shop. She's serving the same same type of customer. Her shop is literally turning into the anthropology of Etsy. I'm so excited about it, but I mean, her shop is a prime example of someone who's targeting a customer and is not just picking a niche. She has many different, you could call them niches, right? Within the same shop, but by targeting the same type of customer, she's seeing huge success and growth. So when she started with me, she actually used my course to get 200 sales and then she added on coaching and she got another 400 sales in five weeks. She is just exploding, but it's because she didn't pick a niche. She's really choosing her customers. Oh geez. Basically this guy is saying you can make up to a hundred dollars a day by targeting holidays in your print on demand shop. So, okay. It's a tough way to go by just chasing holidays. I would not recommend having a holiday shop. I would launch with more evergreen items and then add in some holiday items, but I definitely would not make your bread and butter holidays because then you are constantly chasing and your listings only have a runtime of like, you know, maybe four to 12 weeks um, maximum. And then they die. They don't build with a consistent velocity of sales and the sales history is not consistently building. I would have a shop where your core products, your core revenue drivers are more evergreen. And then I would maybe consider mixing in holiday. A lot of my students, before they came to me, they started with holiday shops, holiday t-shirts, holiday mugs. So they get through St. Patrick's Day, okay? Now it's chasing Mother's Day, okay? Now it's chasing the 4th of July and they're constantly trying to come up with new designs for the next holiday. It's a tough way to go because your listings just build up then die down. 
build up then die down. It's really hard to build consistency that way. So yes, you could do that, build a shop around holiday, but I don't think that that's the path of least resistance in building momentum in an Etsy shop. I'm really a proponent of building a business that is high revenue and consistent year round, where you have consistent sales that are you know much more predictable and stable. Consistency is what gives you peace of mind to be able to do this full time. If you are trying to do Etsy full time and you are in the cycle of chasing holidays, it can be pretty stressful. You hope your designs hit, what if they don't? Then you're hoping for the next holiday to be, do better for you. And I would not wanna build a business that way. I wouldn't recommend doing it. If you're an Etsy seller and you're running out there to use that new Etsy GPT, don't. Now don't get me wrong, a Chrome extension like this would be amazing and hopefully they'll develop it further. But for now, it has API integration with ChatGPT. And for those that you don't know about ChatGPT, they get all their data from September of 2021 and before, nothing beyond. So it's outdated. And in the world of SEO, which is constantly changing day by day, you don't want to have keyword data from two years ago. So do not use Etsy GPT to optimize your titles and tags for your listings. Not yet. So I'm sorry if I'm bursting some bubbles here, but I would definitely heed my warning until this thing gets more developed. In the meantime, hit that follow and stay up to date on the Etsy world. So that is really interesting that it's using data from two years ago or older. Definitely agree, would not want to be using that for your titles and tags. Um, not the way to be competitive in today's market. I have a really great SEO video um, that actually doesn't rely on other tools. In my program, really, the only tool that we rely on is the free version of eRank. So we're not paying for any Etsy keyword tools, really relying on Etsy itself. That's gonna be the most accurate, up-to-date data is what's on Etsy today. Yeah, so I totally agree with this guy. I would not be relying on a tool that is providing data from several years ago for your SEO. If you are interested in any of my help with your Etsy shop, or if you're planning to launch a shop and you wanna have a strong launch, reach out to me. You can always find me on Instagram at Dylan Jarris or just email team at dylanjarris.com. And if you'd rather just have a conversation, you can just schedule a free call with my team with the link below. And when you do that, we actually have a meeting with an analysis all about your shop if you have one. Otherwise, we talk about your goals and maybe how we could help you. So if that interests you, definitely feel free to book a free call below. All right, I'll see you guys in the next video.